the Barcelona City Council told me that they're not looking to reduce tourist numbers. They're looking to manage the flow of tourism. And this is, this is a phrase that I'm increasingly hearing more of, managing the flow. Is this a feasible solution towards the future? Um, in some ways, it sort of feels like having your cake and eating it too. But if the, is it possible to manage the amount of tourists that, say, go to a place like Bar Barcelona? Absolutely. There's all sorts of uh, tricks one can do to manage tourists to visit, to, to disperse the visitor t through time of day pricing, seasonal pricing, and so forth. Uh, the Chinese are masters at adding capacity and managing flows. An example is the giant Buddha in Lashan, China, where everyone comes for the Buddha, but the, the municipal government built an enormous attraction adjacent to it under the same admission that kind of disperses the visitor over this, this large park. That's just one example. Uh, Barcelona to me is a, is a very unique problem because the problem there is that the visitor wants to go to a place that the residents love and adore. It's their favorite district with night clubs and bars and cafes. And so everybody wants to go to the same small area of Old Town. So the dispersion would require quite substantial strategy to make that happen. But in most of the world, there's tremendous opportunity, again, to just develop more capacity in and around sort of the core areas that people really want to visit in the world. Demand is not going to go down. The Asian tiger is such, and the growth of the middle class, and so many of the economies of the world with 8 billion people on the planet. The, the demand is here to stay. So capacity needs to increase, and management approaches to disperse the visitor must, must improve dramatically. So in that way, do you feel that, say, further protests that are being planned, will they have any impact? You know, will governments have to sort of listen to the residents as well when they talk about how they're going to manage tourism in the future? Well, I think when you get to the degree of frustration and anger that Barcelona residents feel that the local politicians will have to listen at some point and continue to take steps, um, but they just have a very, very, very difficult challenge there because uh, they like to blame the cruise ships, but because, you know, there are a lot of cruise ship passengers coming in because if you take a Western Mediterranean cruise, you're going to Mallorca, Mallorca and you're going to Barcelona. So there's an issue there. But Barcelona is attractive. Visitors come in many forms, many transport arrangements. It's a highly attractive uh, destination. They need to find more ways to disperse the visitor over broader parts of the city and the metropolitan area. Uh, and again, it's really kind of a core zone. That's the most, the greatest issue of sensitivity. Uh, so that's a that's a very difficult one, in particular in Barcelona. And it can be it can be done though, Randy, with the right with the right approach. And uh, you highlight a case in a village in, in in the south of France. Just explain to us how they created an environment where tourists are welcomed and uh, the local population is happy as well. Well, I'm thinking of a little village at saint guillem in, in, uh, in the south of France, where many years ago there was a catastrophe. A, a, a person died of a heart attack that should have been rescued by an ambulance, but on the busy weekend, the ambulance couldn't come to town. So what this village did is outside the village, they created an area where people can drive to on the weekends in the, in, the, in the summer season and leave their car there and either bicycle, walk, or take an electric clean energy shuttle bus into the village. So this charming village... Uh, the residents can drive in, but that sort of strategy where you keep the crowds kind of at bay, you create some other attractions around it, some other activities, whether it's, in this case, kind of a transport mechanism that's also fun. It's a lovely stroll or bicycle ride into the lovely village. So that took investment and creativity. And the, 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 the main point I'd really like to make here is that the problem is not over tourism as much as the lack of management of tourism. I've been in travel and tourism for 40 years, working on committees and trade associations of Europe, North America, and Asia. And governments around the world traditionally just didn't think they had a role in managing. So we see good management of protected areas and national parks, but very few municipal governments in the world even really even had a mechanism to manage. This is the great awakening that needs to take place that government needs to understand Tourism is, is a sector that needs management. Uh, and then, then there are ways to uh, manipulate, to control, uh, to add capacity and so forth to tackle the pro problem. But so much needs to be done just to create awareness that what needs to be done at the government level to, uh, to, to find solutions to these, to these challenges.